I've laid out a part A and a part B of the of the pant and what's important that when you're sewing especially with any pattern you're going to have a front and a back according to whatever sewing pattern you're working with the pattern will tell you essentially which is the front or the back and in this case uh, pattern B is the front and pattern A is the back of the trouser now as you're working through these when you're cutting your fabric and you work within the pattern um, in these instructions it's said to cut out the pants and each leg individually uh, that is incorrect I have uh, I've taken a, a sewing course here just a little while ago and from also my reading that I've done within within my study of sewing uh, you always cut your fabric in twos so that way it is matching. You have the same length. The, the cloth runs upon its own grain, so wherever the grain line is, uh, those processes are matching and even. If you don't do that, then you're going to have pants, jackets, or shirts that don't sit properly. The, they're going to sit at an angle. They're going to rest at a different angle than, than the rest of your clothing. So it's very important. Never cut single pieces. Now, in this case, with this pant, I also included a liner on the inside. So in here, I chose a, a black liner. Again, cutting it in the shape of the pattern and, and working that and then sewing it into the inside. Some of the best practices that, that I have learned so far is that whenever you're, whenever you're going to be sewing, uh, especially in this case uh, with, say, a liner, um, I find that the most important points that you're going to want to secure on your pattern so it's even and flows all the way through is starting here right at the crotch line. And you can see that I boxed in uh, with pins in, in this area here to secure that fabric. I then went along the, uh, the inseam going, going up the crotch line towards the waist and from there I was also adding extra pins keeping that placement tight and secure. The next point that I went to, I went to the top left hand corner of the waist, again boxed that in with pins to keep that secure, and then from there I worked back down all the way to the bottom, pinning this one side. Uh, I think it's important that you, that you only pin one side at a time. Don't try to sit here and then pin this side and pin that side, because in this case, when you're working with an extremely fine liner, it's going to move and it's going to move everywhere. So you're going to be spending a lot of time trying to ease fabric and this is already a time intensive project. You don't want to add any more to it. So I've taken the time to, to run up and down each seam with an overlocking stitch. Now what that's going to do, it's going to help prevent fraying when you're cleaning it. In this case, this would be a dry clean only. So it's going to be a little bit gentler on the fabrics, but the reason why I, I did an overlocking stitch was because I don't own a serger. So again, that's protecting the, the garment from fraying. I am going to follow up on that with the front of the pant. Now, we're going to get back together uh, and put these, put these right sides together is what they say. And what I mean by right sides together, it's one of the most important things that you can possibly do. Um, because you never want to start making a build and you have a right side and a wrong side, which basically means the, the grain and the, uh, the weave of the fabric is different than one or the other. So you don't want that. Now, my, my own sewing teacher asked me, Jeremy, why do you have masking tape on your, on your pieces? And I said, it's so I know which is the good side when I'm working with solid colors. Now, Hopefully you can see this, but you're going to notice that this is a dull, uh, this is more dull as opposed to this has a shine to it. So this is the liner, this is the cloth side, so this would be the right side, this is the inside or wrong sides. Once you line up, you always, always, always start sewing on the outside edge. Line these up, pin them, make sure that the fabric's not moving, and best practice again is using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. 
The, uh, the instructions for this build only call for a half inch seam allowance. I'm not sure why, but 5 8 is, is standard in what you'd find in, I'm going to say, almost every sewing pattern that you'd see. It gives you an opportunity to, uh, to trim some stuff up. You're able to take good measurements and it's solid all the way through. Plus, it, it also gives you a little extra movement in case you know one of these isn't perfectly isn't perfectly cut and that way you're going to have enough fabric to put your needle down and create your stitch all along there. So that's the basic points of this. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please put them in. I look forward to reading them. Bye for now.